Uh, so more or less, these are the visible steps. Uh, uh, but there is a password which is stored by uh, one of the programs mentioned before. And uh, uh, the, the cryptographical algorithm is a, is a kind of one-way mapping. So if you get your password from a data bar, database or DB table, then uh, you should uh, have some difficulties in order to restore the password. And uh, in uh, better places, uh, some additional salt is uh, mixed uh, to the password so that uh, it tries to slow down the opportunities for cracking it up. The checking password is very similar. Uh, the the hash is um, compared with uh, stored hash, and if they are identical, then uh, a user may uh, may be logged in, and uh, the hashing algorithm uh, is does not only determine by the cryptographical operation, but also cryptographical mapping and formatting beforehand. It has an importance. You will see through an example. How, why cracking passwords? First of all, security audit is the main purpose for cracking a password. We would like to test if our users uh, use um, safe passwords. And the other one is a kind of a pen test, a kind of burglary test, uh, when uh, we get hold of the password of other users. And uh, we would like to get some more authorization with the cracking of other users' passwords, uh, then uh, uh, password crackers comes uh, very handy. Either we load a software down or we buy a proper pass password crackers. But what if uh, we don't have any password cracker, which normally happens when the hashing algorithm is not now, no one has published it, uh, no one has written a, a, a cracker. Uh, first example is a source code um, test. Uh, what is uh, in the Apache Derby database? It's a very small J uh, DB manager written in Java. It can work in embedded client server mode and in client server uh, mode. Uh, it can identify the user on the basis of the password. You can see the proper setting. And you can see that we started our Derby database server, which will just listen uh, in uh, port uh, 1225. Uh, and then we use a client. And then we create a user whose name is test0, um, password test12. And then we ask for the new password. The, the, these are not standard SQL instructions, but this is how it works in the Derby. Um, uh, password is hexadecimal value not meant for human use. Uh, we would like to to know about these values, so we load the source code. We look for the password uh, text, text, and then we will generate this encrypt password function. We will find this uh, or search for this uh, encrypt function. This is an SRA type of SRA type of encryption. And before that, there is a conversion, a simple cycle or, or loop. All of the characters of the password is uh, decomposed into upper four bits and lower four bits, and it stores it. And uh, the loop is incremented after every step. But uh, the cycle variable, the loop variable, is used in two instructions, one after the other, which will result in the following thing. Each and every character, with the exception of the last one, we, then the upper four bit of the uh, of the previous lower four bit will be overwritten by the upper four bits, and uh, you can see that we will lose data here as the bottom box overrides the top box. These are the consequences. ASCII code uh, table is here in one column from um, capital A to capital O. We have the same upper four bytes. Bit. So 
Uh, if anyone is uh, given in the, in the password, then we can see some examples of it. If a uh, password consists of several characters or number of characters, then we don't only have 16 similar passwords, but several times 16 similar passwords uh, uh, with the generation of the same hash. And Derby will let us in together with the same type of user or that the similar user. If I uh, uh, so, let's take eight character password uh, from lo lowercase, uppercase letters and numbers, and then uh, the total number is two times ten to the power of fourteen. Yeah, the whole uh, uh, search. In a video um, circuit board, which is relatively uh, recent and quick enough, takes 21 days. And if we use the hex byte transformation in Derby, then it is uh, drastically reduced to 0.23 seconds. Only seven zeros must be written as um, the power of 10. And uh, only 0.23 seconds is the time of total search. Uh, you can see that the ratio is 1 to 8 million. At least the, the computation need uh, went down uh, to this uh, level or, or in this proportion. In May, the next uh, version was released, which correct this indexing error, and uh, also an announcement was given with it, uh, where they tried to discourage us to use built-in authentication and not recommend it anymore instead of they, they recommend uh, uh, alternative versions. Um, Site-based database handling. Um, Let's speak about uh, uh, reverse engineering. In the case of programs, uh, we have two branches, one live analysis, the other branch is offline analysis. Debugger is the live, and disassembler is the offline type, monitoring tools in the first case. If somebody knows his internal tools, then uh, he will know that for the f uh, running of a program, uh, uh, we really can perform a real-time analysis or monitoring what kind of network operations is performed by the program. Yeah, this is online live analysis, offline uh, uses of this assembler. So we, we, we uh, use the ex we try to disassemble the ex lines uh, back to C code. Uh, it, it seems to be reliable and uh, functioning well, but nobody has yet implemented it or prepared it. A database is a large, complex program. For example, side, in the case of site base, EXA and DLL consists of several thousands of um, assembly statements or instructions. And it is not possible for us to check each and every assembler instruction uh, because it, it is out of human scale. But uh, uh, instead, we would like to have a comprehensive picture of this, uh, of this what the uh, code section is doing, uh, with what purpose. And then I set up a theory about inputs, outputs functioning. Uh, which can also be seen from a debugger, and then this theory is tested, this hypothesis is tested, and if this hypothesis doesn't hold true, then I just uh, search a little more in the code, uh, modify it, and I keep uh, repeating this cycle till I am proved right. Sidebase is a database handler for a large corporation, Market share four, uh, fourth ma is in market share in terms of market share. After Microsoft, Oracle, and IBM, and in uh, is closely related to, to the SQS server of Microsoft because Microsoft bought its code in 1994 and started his own development. Password encryption, two type of algorithms, SIP prop and SHA 256. The first is the is our own development. It, it is not uh, officially published. The second is officially published. 
No, the later one, uh, the latter one is the newer one, or the most recent one. First, let me speak about SHE256 hash, how it operates, how it functions. First, I start a sidebase database uh, from Windows or a simple command line, and uh, I tap in, I enter, uh, look for login password. And this is the algorithm which authenticates it uh, or delimits de it. Uh, I ask for the password for, from the table, uh, the appropriate table. And, uh, and there are these long sequence of bytes. Always start with a constant, uh, C007. And the rest of the number of bytes is identical uh, with the output plus 8 which will be solved, if I understood it correctly, speaking extremely fast. Uh, let's check how it works. We should find entry points to the program uh, where we can catch that part of code segment where the conversion takes place. Uh, we can find the system codes or look for system codes, input, output, uh, writing out inputs and outputs, uh, or network file uh, operations. Uh, uh, for example, in the case of a cryptographic algorithm, is is looking for known constants in order to find the entry point. And then we will check the this, uh, description of Sybase in the algorithm. Uh, it is a simple conversion of the password, 16-bit uh, conversion. And then sort is just added to the result or or linked to the result. And no matter how we try to reproduce it, it, it will never come out what is actually being stored in the database. If we take a look at the description of this algorithm, S H A, then lots of constant numbers, um, constants can be identified because the algorithm in its last steps uses these numbers. And on the screen, we can see uh, the memory space for one constant. We load in our debugger start it, and then we just uh, jump to the process of the operating system which runs the database handler. And because of the peculiar feature of the Intel processors, bytes appear in reverse order as uh, opposed to the dis descriptive ones. Uh, so everything happens within four bytes. Um, this is the conversion or the reversion, re-reversing. And then this is a constant, and we will also find many other constants, but this is our useful constant. We set a memory big point, point to the debugger, so the application wants to uh, access these uh, bytes, and the debugger will stop and show us how far it has gone. This is the memory breakpoint. We change the password for a user and the database handler uh, must carry out an encryption or hashing and these are the last steps of uh, the 256. We know that it was an HL256. We have a stack called stack function. Debugger will try to restore on the basis of the stack values and those function calls that happened before. This is, these are the list of the embedded function calls. And one of these calls uh, uses or contains our password as a parameter. The next step is to find the instruction which calls this function. And we, here we put uh, an instruction breakpoint in, or insert a, a breakpoint. And if we inserted this breakpoint and the program has stopped, then uh, debugging is going on stepwise. 
and there is a call. Uh, uh, this is our, our converted uh, password, lots of zeros and then eight bytes at the end. This is the sort, because when we uh, inquire about the passwords from the database, then next to the encrypted hash, we will find these eight bytes. If we just uh, count the number of zero, then uh, we will exactly know how long it is, uh, what, what its length is. And then uh, we can check our hypothesis. And then where we get is the fact that hash will uh, hash will also be found in the database so our reconstruction was right these are the details for security is safe and then uh, we last thought my colleague we developed a cracker under a relatively short time and then uh, OpenSSL is the library or the directory code where you can find and there was some rep replacement here and some modification of, uh, of the encryption and hash algorithm. This can be downloaded from this home page. Good. Well, from now on, we'll take a bigger bite into the reverse engineering of this unknown algorithm. And we need to know, and this is a stumbling block. The old Sybase version is not available, and the current version is not supportive of this. No longer allows for SIPROP. I understand that Sybase 12 is still being used, and it supports this algorithm. So it still is of practical use. Well, for the last time, it was 12.01, where this was of use. And all we can download on a trial basis is 05. If we study the documentation, you will find that downgrading is possible, setting back the database release from 15.0 to 15.01. And we can have access to the old type password encryption. And now we'll do the functions that are missing from the screen. And now if we log in using the user information, the login password parameters, the old algorithm is next to the new algorithm. And if we check the password encryptions, we will find the old encrypted and the new encrypted versions side by side. And they are pretty similar when you look at the endings of 256. And the byte number is the same, so it's probably the same. And that's the old password encryption hash. In the second byte segments, you, you will find 05. It's a similarity. So we try to analyze what's going on. We start debugging the old password encryption algorithm. And there's a function call. The output is 64 bytes, and the last 28 bytes is included in the old hash in the database. Now we get inside this, and we have a notion that it's block cipher, but it's not DES, not AES. No specific contents, uh, constants are found, and we must come up with a way of identifying it. When we've run out of possibilities, we get IDA free That's the IDA um, assembler. We'll establish that the symbol tables are linked to the database manager code, which means IDA can restore the function and source names. 
until Ida parses these exa uh, files. What I did using my virtual uh, machine, I waited an hour. It wasn't anywhere in the process. I went to bed, went to sleep, and in the morning it had uh, cracked uh, the parsing information. And the assembly code has this solution here in the meta encrypt line. And the meta key SCH call uh, is going to provide an output that becomes the input here. So meta key SCH in some way participates in the generation of the encrypted hash. And after some investigations, we find this logic. Here you get the details. Meta key ESC gets a password, produces an output of 64 bytes. Meta encrypt produces another 64 uh, bytes. And the last eight uh, bytes will be the encrypted password. And now we need to uh, crack these boxes. Meta encrypt first gave us these clues, and these are the simpler things about 80 assembly instructions. There are five function calls, so it's not only 80 instructions, but there are calls embedded, and there are further embedded calls. And about conditional jumps, we have approximately seven. Now we look at the backward engineered assembly code. We notice two things. First, here's an interesting four letter acronym, FIOL. That's a block encryption algorithm. Those of you knowledgeable about encryption will know this, and it's not really used anymore. And also, there is a constant string, a const string, uh, which is the input for the encryption. Now, let me say a few words about FIAL. It goes back to 87. It was a replacement for the DES algorithm, just as secure but faster to compute. It's based on Feistel networks, and there's a key scheduling portion followed by the encryption decryption phase. There is lots of different alternatives which vary as to the number of key size and also the cycle numbers, the algorithm cycles, that is, and the X is the latest version. Vulnerabilities were always uncovered in the last one. Whenever a new one was published, another vulnerability was always exposed, and they got fed up with it, and they um, made it not recommended for use. Now, which field version is in Sybase? I try to um, give you a brief summary. I mentioned that there's a key schedule size which produces subkeys for the internal encryption cycles, depending on which release we are using. The number of internal cycles will be different. So the key schedulers output is going to be different because the number of cycles will be uh, different as well. So field 8 has 38 such cycles and bytes, and that's a clear indication that we're talking about field 8 as the algorithm here. And that's the string constant here, eight blocks worth of data, eight times eight bytes. And that's a riddle. I will spare the audience all assembly descriptions, but working backwards in the code, you uh, must see that each internal um, cycles uses the constant string, one of the blocks, as input, and it ciphers those. So there's a special block which will use the meta keys um, function output, and that's what is generating the encrypted output. And that's very much like the Sybase solution. 
One difference is that there's no initialization vector, and in each cycle a different key uh, is used, whereas Psi, uh, psi block uh, chain uses a different one in each cycle. And now we'll get complicated. The meta key SCH is a key scheduling algorithm. It's more complex, it consists of 450 assembly instructions, 15 function calls, and 29 conditional jumps. Looking inside, you will see that in each cycle it produces what we call salt, one byte of random value, and this one byte is used here. And it's mixed using XORs to the input of the next cycle. It also indexes the input and output, but here's a simple chart. Take this one byte, that's the result of the random call. It returns one byte. And you XOR that with each byte of the input. You change it in some way. And the weird thing is that after the second byte is that each next byte is going to uh, get the next XOR result. And again, I'll spare you the assembly instructions walkthrough. Here's an overview. Eight rounds. There's some form of initialization. Step number one is that the password is enhanced to 57 bytes. It's a weird combination because it's not even an even number. And at the beginning, it will initialize the seed number using the system time from which it generates a single byte and it hands it over to the srand function with the rand call. There's a round salt byte and again here's a process chart to give you a better idea. We take the expanded password, 57 bytes, and in this case it starts with byte 0, and in this case we check the first 8 bytes. We need to note that here's the random value of 1 byte, uh, which is mixed into the input. And it's important to see that encryption only takes place in the first two rounds and it takes the seed number to calculate one of the positions. Security by obscurity uh, was achieved through combination because they thought that this is so complex that nobody is going to make any sense of it. And the mixing is going to alter the, out, uh, the outcome of each round. Now we can implement the algorithm in C. Field 8 can be implemented using applied cryptography by Bruce Schneier. I checked four or five sources and that's the one I could have an overview of the most easily C source code um, can be found at this useful link. And each step can be reconstructed precisely. And something is still wrong because the output is not correspondent to the password stored hash code, which means Sybase in some way uses not quite the official uh, feel 8. Digging deeper in Sybase, we will see that different from the official implementation. The key schedule is only the first four bytes and the, the other bytes do not match. So something different is taking place. We'll start to analyze how this is working precisely. Here's the mathematical definition. One variable which is used in all the rounds that is initialized with a value of zero and it's updated in each round, and Sybase forgot to do that 
it seems a complicated definition, but at the source code level, it's a, sing, a single instruction. This is the one we need to skip in, in our own implementation. So in summary, let's check out the structure of the hash. The first byte, which we decrypted, will give us the initialization of the random number generator and the sort number will become the same if the seed number is the same because we're only using one quasi random generator so it's not a true randomization and a hash type indicator can also be six or seven I saw on the internet uh, certain versions in which um, there was one or two. It must have been based on DES, so I couldn't use that for anything. I discarded it. And the last uh, 28 uh, bytes gives you the hash of the meta encrypt result. So I've successfully backward engineered this code and it's not been published although I've heard that some security experts have this so how do we crack our own password all passwords operate in the following way in some way we'll have to produce TES passwords and format them using salt and then generate the hash using cryptographic transformations and if the password hash matches the hash to be cracked that means it's the same as the original password of the user how do we produce the TES passwords one is to use a word list or brute force. You've all heard of this. There are two approaches. First, use intelligence to generate the password connected with the user data. As Alex and I spoke about this yesterday, he thinks that the more we crack passwords, the intelligent approach seems to be more conducive. And the Markov chain approach is the other interesting one. Take the words in the Hungarian language and we collect statistics on consonants and vowels and their relative frequency. And also certain vowels followed by certain consonants. There are patterns and probabilities can be assigned. So we can generate um, patterns which correspond to the uh, statistics and that's an interesting approach now as to functionality of a password a cracker we don't just crack one single hash in a security audit we uh, crack hundreds of passwords in parallel so you must be able to process multiple passwords simultaneously not all crackers can do that the other key feature is session handling and that means if we pause the process for whatever reason because we want to use the machine for a different purpose we don't want to use up all the resources and then we can pause it and uh, we can carry on where we left off well these are the key prerequisites for being a, a good password cracker how can we speed up the password cracking process method number one is all modern 86 based CPUs will include parallel execution units we take an instruction and implement it using several bits of data so the data pool uh, will give us a chance to multiply execution speed and of course special instructions must be used and that's one opportunity the other one is to use the GPU the graphic processor unit the main difference is that the parallel units 
are not using instructions, but the kernel which is uploaded to the video card using separate threads. In the execution units, there will be uh, branching processes and different codes may result from this. And uh, that means it's not certain that the same steps take place at the same time. What makes this difficult is that if you take a GPU, there are lots of executable units, but if we want to write fast code, we need to use the shared memory or the registers of the CPU, and they're both a limited resource because the shared memory is 16 to 32 uh, kilobytes and the register is even smaller. That's about the equivalent of 8 kilobytes. We, even that is shared across the execution uh, units, so they will have less and less memory as their numbers grow, which is quite a tricky thing. Just to give you a sense of how this goes, well, the top of the range cards and cutting edge GPUs can have up to five or six hundred execution units. Just to give you an estimate of the performance gain relative to CPU processing, modern CPUs rely on multiple cores. So, in addition to the uh, parallel opportunities, they have several cores which you can separately use. So three to ten times uh, faster is how faster, how much faster you can get. Of course, that depends on the GPU and what you use the video cards for and how you code all that so uh, the speed gain is not automatic due to the above mentioned factors. I actually wrote one of these password crackers on GPUs, NVIDIA and MySQL and Oracle 11 hashes are used to crack passwords simultaneously. The features include the ability to process several password hashes at the same time and they also handle session handling. That, of course, means that password cracking is going to burden the GPU so much that it just about goes dead and you can hardly use it for any other operations. And of course, I'm not getting into the details. It's a lengthy process to develop one of these. It's one thing to write the code and use the GPU, but it's another thing to make it work effectively. And proprietary hardware, special integrated circuits can be used. Well, the fastest computation performance, to the best of our knowledge, is achievable using the ASIC uh, chips where the transistors are fixed and burnt. So they only handle a single process. You can't program that. And if you want one of these produced, it takes a lot of startup capital, several millions of dollars. That's one of the options. FPGA is the other option. That is, transistors can be programmed. This is used for circuit simulation. And of course, you can perform any operations. You can use them for computing as well. What you need to do. Um, is know that FPGA is four to five times slower than hardware implementation. I heard this in Krakow at the conference called Confidence, and I spoke to a colleague from the US uh, producing proprietary hardware for uh, cracking passwords. This is my personal opinion on the possible speed-ups. If we, we had a special purpose hardware, then we can f f make it faster. Uh, it depends on who, who would do this implementation of this Sybase algorithm. The other thing that I'm missing here is that I've never heard of um, special purpose hardware which could uh, delete 
or search several passwords parallelly. And as conclusion, any kind of um, hashing algorithm can be reverse engineered. Security by obscurity is absolutely useless. We cannot hide these things. And on the surface, we can find lots of source code which will help us in development, and we shouldn't start from scratch. Every technology has some advantages and disadvantages. If we have a special purpose hardware, we may use, use brute forcing. If you would like to delete passwords in within the framework of an audit, then even a simple CPU is useful. Thank you for your attention so much about my presentation.